So today I want to talk to you more specifically about the link between the economic crisis we are in because of the financial meltdown of 2008 and how this is linked or not to the very nature of our current economic system. In other words, was the financial crisis and the great recession that followed just an accident or was it an almost unavoidable structural result of the kind of economic system we have in place. So frankly, it's a little bit of both. So I'm going to look at this from a broader perspective and also propose some solutions because you know what, we need to understand what happened if we don't want it to happen again. So let's just take a few steps back. In the last 35 years, we have seen a resurgence of neoliberalism. One by one, the pillars of the social democratic uh, uh, Keynesian state have been attacked by the right. You know, less government, less regulation. But in the last 35 years, it's important to note that uh, even though we've had this neoliberal ideology that claims uh, that it wants just a free market uh, capitalism, what we have seen is in fact a new kind of capitalism emerge. The society, the economic system we live in today and that mounted up in the last 35 years is very different than the one that we had in the beginning of the 20th century or the late 19th century. So we, had some, we have now a new capitalism. What is this new capitalism? Well, part of it is it's a more and more financial capitalism and less and less based on industry. We're in a situation now where people uh, can uh, make money not by production or investing in the real economy, but just by, by playing with other people's money. So this kind of financial speculative capitalism has really uh, taken place in the last 35 years. It's more and more glo globalized, so national governments have more and more difficulty regulating it internally. We have seen uh, 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 an incredible decline of small and medium-sized businesses, which are the heart of, re of our economy, and everything's being replaced by corporations, multinational corporations. Um, and the other uh, fa uh, factor of this, this new capitalism is in fact that even though the right talk of, talks about competition and so forth, when we look at it, really, uh, our economic system is less and less based on competition. What we have is more and more oligopolies, a few major corporations controlling more and more. Where 30 years ago we had 100 different businesses or industries, that shrunk down to 20, then to 10, then to 5 with mergers and acquisitions. So paradoxically, the ideal of competition uh, leads to less competition because now we have fewer players that can actually control, control the market. Of course, also we saw uh, more and more speculative funds. We saw the high-risk mortgages in the U.S. Personal debt is twice what it, what it was 30 years ago. In 1980, uh, people had, of course, people had debt, but their debt to income ratio was approximately 70%. Now it's double. People, when you look at the, the debt that people have compared to their income, now it's 140%. And, and savings have, have gone down, uh, down and down. And what we see also is an incredible concentration of economic wealth. And I just saw this recently in a business magazine. Uh, with the financial crisis and so forth, some of these big firms collapsed, but other big firms actually uh, took up the space. There's a business, there's a, a, an asset management f a firm in New York called uh, BlackRock. This firm, this one firm controlled by one board of directors actually controls 3.4 trillion dollars. That's more than Germany's GDP. 3.4 trillion dollars. So that's an incredible, incredible concentration of economic power. Uh, and this month, in the, in the uh, well-known, fairly right-wing, uh, 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 The Economist from London, they actually say that 
or it is reported in an article that income inequality is not just a, co a consequence of economic crisis, that the current economic crisis we're in was actually caused in part by this growing inequality. When you have the top 1% of population taking in 20% of income. 20 years ago, it was approximately 1 to 10%. Now it's 1 to 20% as a ratio. Exactly the same ratio as it was before the crisis in 1929. Almost exactly. It's in The Economist of uh, January 22nd. So take a look. <coughs> so again, when we talk about the crisis, everybody says, well, it's a crisis based, it was based on greed, and it was based on lack of government regulation. That is true. That is partly true. It's not all of the story. So let, let me be clear. What we lived through in the last three years, and we're still feeling the aftermath of it, wasn't simply an economic crisis. It wasn't simply a crisis of the economy. It was a crisis of this new capitalism that I talked about that had emerged in the last 35 years. It is the failure, <coughs> not of the economy. It is a failure of that model, this financialized, globalized, corporatized, and, and cartel-oriented capitalism. Here, here. And let's be clear, this, this crisis would not have happened if there wasn't such a concentration of economic power. And looking, looking at it, uh, I was reminded of one of my old uh, poli-sci profs uh, said when I was, uh, when I was younger studying uh, political science, and I, didn't, I don't think I completely understood at that time what he meant, but now I understand. Uh, he said, capitalism is not, first and foremost, an economic system. Capitalism is, first and foremost, a political system. It is a way of structuring power within a society. And that's what ex explains what happened, because when you look at the aftermath of the crisis and who created it and so forth, the people that were involved in manufacturing this crisis didn't pay one cent to clean up their mess. Not one cent. Who did? We did. Through governments, through bailouts, and so forth. We paid for it. And that's the nature of our economic system. It's always been like this, but this crisis really revealed it, is that capitalism privatizes profits and socializes loss. That's exactly, that's exactly what happened. And why did, did, uh, did they get away with, with it? Simple, because they can. The word says it. I'm not being a far left radical here. The word says it, capitalism, capitalism, the rule of those who have money. It says it in the name. So, so, it's, so it, our system is a, an incredible concentration of economic and political power. And it's that aspect that I really want to emphasize. And so, what was the f political fallout of the crisis? And that's where it may seem a little discouraging, is that people throughout the world are now electing even more fervently right-wing governments. The very people that created the crisis in the first place, the same people that criticize welfare for the poor, are all for welfare for the rich. When we look at the US, more Republicans are voted in. The same people that, that actually uh, 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 created this crisis. And in Canada, when we're asked, when we ask people in polls, who do you trust to manage the economy? People say, conservatives, Harper. And what do they, what, what does Harper say and, and the people like him? He says, you know, the left, the social democrats, you don't know how to manage an economy. Because you do? Are you kidding me? 